Hi guys, today I'm going to be showing you the newly released is the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. I picked this up from Selfridges because it hasn't been released here yet in New Zealand. Now it's very hard to pick a shade online and I've never used an Hourglass foundation before so I chose shade 5. Now this is too light for me, I can make it work but you'll still be able to see what this foundation looks like and when I put a bit of bronzer on it really does look lovely. So I'm going to say straight away that I absolutely love this foundation. I I think it is just gorgeous. It blurs the pores and just smooths out the skin and it's just a really lovely foundation and I'm really impressed with it. Now I did see a couple of videos on this before I received this in the mail and the people that tried it had more dry skin and they did feel that it was a little bit drying so if you have dry skin I think it's probably better to use a primer that gives a lot of moisture before you put this on. So with dry skin, I say that skin prep is quite important with this. But when I heard that, I thought this is going to be really good for oily skin. And it is. It's really, really beautiful. So here is what the foundation looks like. comes in a glass bottle. It has a pull-off lid with a pump. This is made in Korea, but it says that it is assembled in the USA and it has a shelf life of 12 months from date of opening. Now also released with this foundation was a brush and I picked this up. Now this brush is okay. It's just okay. If you already have a foundation brush, I have the BK Beauty 101. I have the Sonia G. It's the Jumbo Base one, I think it's called. It's one of her fusion brushes. Both of those are just as good, if not better, than this one. Now, I do own about two or three other hourglass brushes and the one thing that I do like about them is that they are a little bit weighted and I really like that in a brush but I just don't think if you have another foundation brush that you really don't need to pick this up. The other thing I found with this is that the brush head itself, I'll just hold it up so you can have a look, but the brush head itself, it's angled beautifully, but I think it could be a little bit bigger and it does place product on quite heavy. So they say that this foundation is a medium to full coverage. I would agree with that. And with this, you almost get a full coverage straight away. So I've worn this two or three times, this foundation. And I've used the BK Beauty 101, goes on beautifully with that, and that Hourglass Foundation brush. But I've also put it on with a beauty blender as well. And that is my preferred option. And that's normally what I do with foundations that are a strong medium, heading towards a full coverage I just tend to think that a beauty blender just gives just that little bit more of a flawless finish and you don't get that really made up look. So for those of you that haven't seen my other videos before I am 53 years old and I have fairly oily skin, probably not excessively oily, but it is definitely oily skin. Now it's heading towards the end of winter here in New Zealand, although today it's a beautiful sunny day and it really feels like someone has flicked the switch and spring has arrived. So I just want you to know that that I've been using this foundation not in hot, humid weather. I will keep on using this foundation because I think it is really beautiful, but I will be testing it out in the summer here and also when we get those, those few two or three humid weeks and see how it holds up in that type of weather as well. So I've already done all my skincare for the morning and I have my sunscreen on. So I've got to put on primer and the primer that I'm going to use, well hopefully I'll be able to use this because it really is empty. It's the Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer. I did a dedicated review on this quite a few months ago earlier in the year when this was first released and I absolutely love this primer. Now I wanted to use this for this video so I've also used this foundation with the Milk, it's the Hydro Grip Primer and it worked well with that and I also have the Tom Ford, the Traceless Soft Matte Primer and it worked beautifully with that as well. So because none of this will pump out anymore I'm just going to 
unscrew the top and I'll just scrape out the very last little bits that's in here and use this today. So I think that I will have enough. And I have ordered a backup of this and also the Tom Ford one as well. And hopefully they will arrive in the next day or two. So before I put this on, I'll just talk a little bit more about this foundation and what Hourglass says that it does. So I've got some notes down here. So this comes in 32 shades. They say it has 16 hour wear. It is a medium buildable coverage and I would agree with that. And it is inspired by the Ambient Lighting Collection, which is beautiful. I have the finishing powder and a couple of their blushes and just gorgeous. And they say this is infused with blurring spheres. Now, when you see it on, I would agree with that as well. I think this does blur really beautifully, this foundation. They say it minimizes the look of imperfections and the skin looks smooth, even and glowing. So I would say that this foundation, even though I would say it's really good for oily skin, it's not a flat matte. I would say they call it a glow foundation. I would describe it as a soft matte. It's really lovely. And they also say that this is transfer resistant and I would agree with that as well. And they also have some skincare ingredients in this foundation as well. They say it has antioxidants to help protect against free radicals. It's infused with white tea extract and vitamin E. And this foundation is also vegan and cruelty free. So I am going to put this on with a dampened beauty blender today. Now, as I was saying, I got shade five and this is too light. The shade that I should have got is 6.5. That's the one with neutral undertones and those type of foundations tend to suit my skin really well. Number five was for neutral undertones as well, but it's just that it's a bit too light. But this isn't going to go to waste. I'm going to give this to my sister-in-law. She's about a shade lighter than me, so I think this will be perfect for her. And when this arrives in New Zealand for sale, I am going to be picking up the shade number six. I just think this is a gorgeous foundation and I really want this in my collection. So the first time that I used this foundation, I think I did a pump and a half towards two pumps. You really only need one pump. So I'll show you the consistency of it. And it looks quite thick and it's just starting to try and run down now but really it's going to stay put so that's the type of consistency that it is so i'll do one side of my face first you'll see as i start to put it on that it is too light it has a slight yellowness to it some people have said that it's too yellow i don't find that it is and once that you've blended it all in i think it looks really nice so you can see that it's too light and against my hand but once I've got it on it doesn't look too bad once I've got bronzer on and everything else as well but you'll still be able to see what this foundation looks like on so this blends really beautifully you don't need much and you can start to see the type of coverage that you get so with this damp beauty blender I get a strong medium finish and it can be built up to full and I'll show you that a bit later. But I just want to show you what it's like just with one layer on before I start building it up. So that's with the one layer on, on the side of my face and it does give a really beautiful finish. Take away the fact that it is a little bit light for me I can vaguely see a bit of redness through here. I have a sunspot here and up here, and I can see that as well. But really this coverage, this strong medium finish is the type of finish that I prefer. It's pretty rare that I would wear a full coverage foundation, but I do like a strong medium one. And I think for the other side, what I'll do is I will use this hourglass brush just to show you what it's like and the type of coverage that a brush gives. And then once I've done that, I can build this side up a little bit more using the Beauty Blender. So I'll go over 
with the brush. So you can see straight away the sort of coverage that a brush gives. When I first used it, I thought straight away that this foundation was a full coverage. That's the type of coverage that you get with a brush. So I've just picked up a little bit that was left in my hand and you don't need much of this to get a really strong coverage. So before I've blended it in, you can already see that with a brush you're getting a lot more coverage than I got on this side. You can't see any of the redness through here and if I go over this part here, it covers up the sunspots on my nose as well. Here's the side done with the brush and here is the side done with the Beauty Blender. And I don't know whether you can pick it up on camera, but I can definitely see a difference. Much more full coverage on this side and on this side is a medium to strong medium finish. And I do prefer this type of finish, but I know there's people that like that more full coverage. And if that's what you like, I do think it is lovely. This doesn't look cakey or overdone, and it really gives a beautiful finish. This lasts really well too. The two other times that I've worn this foundation, I wore it for at least 14 hours, possibly 16 hours, and it looked just as beautiful as when I had just put it on. Now, I do powder this foundation, but I use more of a lighter powder, and today I'm gonna to use the Hourglass one and see what that is like. The other times I've used my Sisley powder because that's more of a lighter one. It's a bit lighter than the Chanel one that I have and that gave a really beautiful finish. So I've just pumped out just a tiny bit more on the back of my hand and I'm just going to add a little bit more coverage now using the Beauty Blender just so it matches the side that I did with the brush. But it also shows you how that this foundation can be built up if you want it to be. So off camera, I did my eyebrows. I also put concealer on and some eyeshadow primer on as well. And I also put some powder under my eyes because I don't use powder under my eyes that I put on my face. I find that powders that I put on my face, if I try to put them under my eyes, then they're just far too dry and it emphasizes the lines that I have under there. So the powder that I use under my eyes is one of the newer releases. It's the Westman Atelier. It's the Vital Press Powder. And I just think that's really beautiful. It sets the concealer but doesn't dry things out really lovely. So this is what it looks like, the foundation. Before I've put any powder on, I'm gonna do a light dusting of powder. Now when I feel it, so it's been sitting down for like at least five minutes now, it feels slightly tacky. In the middle of winter, I don't even think I would really need a powder with this. I would say as the weather gets warmer, then it would definitely need a powder, but there's some foundations you put on, especially ones that are specifically for more of a glow. Then when you put them on, you definitely know when you've got oily skin that you need to powder them down. But I think if you're in a rush and putting this foundation on and you skip the powder, I don't think it would really matter, especially when the weather's a bit on the cooler side like it is here at the moment. So aside from this foundation shade being a bit too light for me, I think it gives a really beautiful finish. It does blur the pores and I just think it gives a really flawless look to my skin. I really love how this looks and I can't wait until New Zealand gets the Hourglass Foundation so I can order the shade 6.5 because I know this is one that I'm going to reach for. It's a really lovely foundation. I find that it doesn't, certainly doesn't emphasize texture. In fact, like I said, it blurs. It doesn't sit in my lines and it doesn't look cakey and it doesn't move round in any way. It's really, really lovely. So now I'm just gonna do a light dusting of powder. I have got the Hourglass. This is the Veil Translucent one. And normally I use my Lumiere powder brush 
to buff powder in but I think I'll use a brush that's a little bit more fluffy just so it's a very light dusting and the one I'm going to use is the BK Beauty this is the 102 and I just give this a little bit of shape this powder really does give a lovely finish and the other thing that I love about this powder is the packaging when you shake it to get a bit of powder out, not too much comes out at a time, which happens with most of the other powders that I've got. So I do really love the packaging of the Hourglass and it does give a really lovely finish. So I'm just going to just put a little bit on and just very lightly buff. So with that really light dusting of powder, it's just set the foundation down but not made it too matte looking. You still get a little bit of a glow through and then once my oils start to work through then it will just look like when I first put it on and it does look really lovely. So it's not like I've put the powder on and then all of a sudden it's taken this foundation to the next level. That wasn't the purpose of why I put the powder on. It was really just to set it a little bit. It really looks just the same as when I first put the foundation on, apart from it just taking away a little bit of the glow. But as I said, once my oils work through, then that glow will come back. And it's not too much of a glow. It just makes you look really healthy and the skin look really beautiful. So now I'm just going to put on the rest of my makeup on off camera. And then when I come back, I'll show you what this looks like in natural light. So now that I've got the rest of my makeup on and I've put on some bronzer, the foundation actually looks really lovely and it probably could be an okay shade for the middle of winter for me but I just think that's the shade 6.5 it's just going to be that little bit more suitable for my skin but the foundation is gorgeous I think this is such a beautiful foundation I've tried out a few foundations this year. There's been a lot of new releases. I've skipped on some. The Suku one that I tried early in the year is absolutely beautiful. And also the new NARS one that was put out as well. I love that one too. This is just as beautiful. Really, really gorgeous. And I'm really impressed with it. I love the way it looks on my skin. And I love it too, that you can have it so that it's a medium finish or you can build it up as well. And I know there are some out there that if you need extra coverage, will you should just add concealer? Well, not necessarily. Sometimes it's good to have a foundation that can be buildable because then you're not using different textures on your skin and they may not suit. But with a foundation that you can put on with a sponge or lightly with a brush, and get a medium or medium strong finish and then build up these areas here to more full coverage I think is a really great foundation I love it when they do that and even though now it is a full coverage foundation on because I use the brush on this side and then built it up with the sponge on this side it looks beautiful it's not cakey it doesn't look thick it's just a really gorgeous foundation. So now I'm going to go out into the lounge. And so this is in my lounge and I have a big window in front of me here. Big window to the right of me and a big window to the left as well. And in natural light, I think this looks really lovely. You can see the finish is just beautiful and it definitely blurs my pores. doesn't emphasize any of the wrinkles or lines that I have I think this is really really lovely really beautiful foundation and I'm just having a closer look in the viewfinder and yeah it's a really really lovely foundation you can see how beautiful this foundation is and why I love it so much now the rest of the makeup that I'm wearing is mostly Chanel the eyeshadow is one of the new Chanel tweeds and I've done videos on those so I'll put a link up there if you want to take a look at that the blush that I've got on is the Chanel water blush and it is in the shade warm pink and the lipstick that I've got on that is from the Chanel 4 collection and I've done videos on that as well so I'll put a link up here if you want to take a look at that 
and everything that I've put on my face today will be linked in the description box below. Well, there's not really much more to say about this foundation. I love it. I don't think I mentioned whether it had a fragrance or not, and I don't think it has because I couldn't really detect anything when I was putting it on. If it does, it is very, very faint. And although a fragrance doesn't bother me, I know there's people out there that don't like fragrances in their foundation. I love the way that it looks. And the way that it looks now, at this time of the year at least, this is how good it looks when I will be taking this off later tonight. So it's still quite earlier in the morning here. I'm just looking at the time. It's about just after nine o'clock in the morning and I probably won't take it off until about 10 or 11 o'clock tonight. That's the same time that I wore this when I wore it the other day and it just wears beautifully. It doesn't wear off in a patchy way or anything like that. It just is really gorgeous. There is a little bit of build up around here. Now I get that with all foundations and even though I have oily skin, it's because I use retinol and I just have a little bit of dryness in there but it's not really detectable and it's not really an issue either but I love it that it's flattering on my mature skin I love it that it doesn't show in my lines and I just think the finish is absolutely beautiful so that's it for today's video I hope you enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next time bye